Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book haul and actually an unboxing as well because I've recently acquired quite a few books and I want to talk to you about them all. So, as always with my kind of haul videos, I have these in little sections of books I've been gifted or sent for a review or just ones I bought myself. But first up, I want to start off with the unboxing. So first up, I've got these two packages that I have bought recently because you know what I wanted to treat myself I've not been feeling great I was in hospital recently so I said you know when I get out I'm gonna buy some books and so I bought some books <laughs> and I'm also celebrating because I'm getting my first YouTube paycheck which is so so cool so I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for watching my videos and even making this possible I'm so very very grateful so I'll open up the little package first I hate these how do you open them There we go. And in here we have got it's She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quinlan. And I recently did my Kelly Quinlan vlog, read this book um, along with her others, absolutely adore them all. So I'm very happy to finally have my own copy. So if you don't already know, you know, you've not seen my most recent vlog. This is a rom-com. It follows two girls who have to fake date, even though they absolutely hate each other, and they get into some shenanigans and it's just the campiest, most cliched story ever, and it works so, so well, it's so fun. And alongside all this light fluffiness, you've also got a character dealing with kind of repercussions of being in a toxic relationship and getting over her ex. And this character work is just handled so, so well, it's so just amazing. I am so in awe of how Kelly Quindling creates these complex, messy characters and just in love. And I'm very happy to have this and to be able to put it somewhere on my shelf. I don't really know where it's gonna go because I've just rearranged it but we will find a place for the sports gaze, for the for the sapphics. There's always a space for sapphics on my bookshelf. Next up we've got this bad boy. Let's try and oh my god what am I doing? <laughs> oh no. There. Right what on earth have we got in here? <laughs> I can't hold it up so you can see it. First up we have got It Goes Like This by Meal. Oh, I'm going to put this down. <laughs> First up we've got It Goes Like This by Meal Moreland. I read and adored this one as an arc so I'm very happy to have my own finished copy. It is so gorgeous. It's in my hands. This follows the former members of a queer pop group and their band broke up a few years ago and despite all being best friends before the band they've been, they've lost contact with each other. They had a bit of a fallout. But when their hometown is flooded, they come together for a benefit concert and some old feelings and such emerge and it is just so good. I adored reading this with everything in me. You've got lesbian main characters and sapphic romance. You've got a bi main character, a pan and non-binary character. You've got so much and it's so damn good. I am in love. Next in the big heavy box we have got... Oh, this one, this one, this one. We've got The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimons. So this is another queer YA contemporary I've adored recently. It's so tiny. So this follows Spencer, a trans boy who's starting at a new school and here he is passing. He's not letting anyone know he's trans due to some previous transphobia at his old school. And here he joins a soccer team. He loves soccer and he starts a relationship with one of his teammates and he's getting on great with everyone. Everything's going great until he's informed that he cannot play because the F on his birth certificate has been discovered and he can't get it changed. And so this is very much a romance at his centre but also dealing with this fallout from him not being able to play and the consequences of this and him fighting against it as well. And it is just absolutely stunning. I adored this book. I flew through it and no wonder it's that tiny but it was just such a good feel-good book. It felt like a warm hug. I loved it. Oh yeah I should mention all the books I bought here are ones that I've read that I loved and I wanted my own copies of because I'm trying not to buy books that I've not read because I have a bit of a problem there. <laughs> Next up we have got... <gasps> we have got... We have got 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Garcevilla. This is another one I've read and adored recently, also spoken about a lot recently. This is another YA contemporary and we follow Jules who gets very very drunk on Twitter one night and accidentally comes out as gay. 
and he hadn't really been planning on doing this because he knows that in his community there's quite a bit of homophobia and machismo and these ideas of what it means to be a man where being gay is not part of it and he really deals with the consequences of this while also beginning a relationship with his twitter crush who slides into his dms after he comes out and this is just also incredible book i adored it so 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 much it's it's just so i don't want to say feel good because it is very hard at times but the moments that aren't hard are so feel good so joyful to read but and then the hard moments are like heartbreakingly honest they're never sensationalized or anything and i just adored it so 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 much and finally my big box is Oh, bright red. Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Emiere. I love this book as well. You're going to get tired of me sounding like a broken record here. This is a YA thriller. And you follow two queer black reads who are both targeted by an anonymous texter at their very elite private school, very white private school. And this deals with ins institutional racism, white supremacy, homophobia, all of that. And it is a very intense thriller and I really really just adored it. It's so damn good. It had me like on the edge of my seat so gripped I could not put it down. It's just such a good book. So yes here is my little post hospital YouTube paycheck joy haul. I also bought another two books that haven't yet arrived. I'm just gonna say them. I got Gear Breakers because it was discounted and I also really really wanted it and that one should be arriving soon and also we are okay for an upcoming vlog so but two books still to come but i'm very very happy with this incredibly queer selection they're so pretty i'm in love <laughs> the issue now of course is also where on earth am i gonna put them because i'm just rearranged and i don't know where to put them <laughs> i'll figure it out okay but now i want to talk about some of the other books that i've gotten recently so first up i'm gonna do just the ones that i myself have bought so first we have got They Both Die at the End by Adam Silveira. I found this in Asda for like four quid and I was like, you know what? I'll finally pick up a Silveira book because everyone in Book Talks loves this and I kind of want to do a little reading Book Talk phase vlog. I've got a few picked out, so look out for that sometime next month, I think. I think that's my, sched my schedule. But I do not actually know much about this other than They Both Die at the End. So this is queer. You've got Achille and Leeds and these two boys both find out that they are going to die today and they connect and have this kind of last day together and it, everyone seems to love it so I'm really hoping I will too. Everyone also seems to cry so we'll see how that goes as well. Next up is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. My friend was having an unhaul and she had this one up and I was like you know what can I have it? I'm kind of in a really trashy romance mood and I want to try this one. I'm really kind of upset though because it's like misprinted so it's not centered like but you know what it's all right I shall survive and this is like a witch hunter and a witch I believe who end up in an arranged marriage I think and it just sounds like a really fun ridiculous fantasy romance which is kind of what I want to read right now so I'm very excited to read it and pick it up and love it hopefully. Next up is Her Name in the Sky by Kelly Quindlin. This is obviously a Kelly Quindlin book that I read for my vlog and absolutely adored. This follows Hannah and Baker who are both Catholic. They go to a Catholic school, their families are Catholic, it's a very Catholic community and they are both suppressing these feelings that they have for each other that are more than just best friends shall we say and this leads to some very upsetting, very complicated, very messy situations and this book is just heartbreaking but I really really liked reading it as well. There's just this intensity of emotions and such strong love between these characters despite how difficult situations get and I just adored reading it. Next up is Heartstopper volume 4 so I've already read and loved this one as well. This is as I said the fourth volume to the Heartstopper graphic novel series which follows Nick and Charlie, two boys who are assigned to sit next to each other in school and this begins a friendship which blossoms into something more which is incredibly queer, incredibly comforting and heartwarming to read and I adore it. This volume was also very very good. It's definitely very different tonally to the other ones. This one's a lot heavier in terms of content and tone but still so lovely and comforting to read. Next up I bought these three books together. My university bookstore was having a three for two on queer books so 
pick some of these up. First up we have got This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amel El Motar. I read this one for my Reading Twitter's Favourite Sapphic Books vlog on my Kindle but I wanted a physical copy because I really really loved it and couldn't resist getting it there. So this is like this Romeo and Juliet kind of inspired story but make it assassins on opposite sides of the century long time war and these two begin this relationship when one writes a taunting note to the other and this begins its correspondence between the two which blossoms into something more and it is just absolutely gorgeously written and so full of metaphors that you get a pity lost but it's so just gorgeous and worth it and I really really adored reading it. Next up is The Unbroken by C.L. Clarke. This is a sapphic fantasy book that came out this year. I'm very very intrigued by it. It is I believe North African inspired. It deals very heavily with colonialism and it sounds so damn good. We've got a bit of like a princess bodyguard trope going on. I think a bit of an enemies to lovers moment as well and I'm very intrigued by this and there's a line in the synopsis that always gets me. Um, through assassinations and massacres in bedrooms and war rooms, Terrain and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation, but some things aren't for sale. I just think that's such a good line and I'm so so excited to read this and see what's happening in bedrooms and war rooms. It sounds very very good, I've heard very good reviews so far so I'm excited to pick it up for myself. And finally from this little selection is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This is a memoir written of course by George M. Johnson and deals with growing up being black and queer and I have heard the most amazing things about this and I'm just very intrigued to begin reading non-fiction and memoirs as well. I've not really read that before so I'm intrigued to start and see how this one goes. Next up I've got some gifts that people were kind enough to send me so a big thank you in advance in case I forget to do it individually when talking about the books. But first up is Ray Bear which I received from Doe and this is another YA fantasy. It looks very good. I've heard amazing amazing things. The sequel is coming out soon so I'm planning on reading it in kind of anticipation of that. And this cover is gorgeous and I have to say it's really bizarre because I can see the face so clearly when I hold the book up myself but whenever I have seen it online like a digital picture of it I can never ever see the face. It's so weird but yes there's a lovely little face in it. This follows a main character called Tadase who's been raised in kind of isolation with the goal in mind that she's going to kill the crown prince and when she is sent to the palace to become one of the members of his council and swear this oath to him that creates a really deep bond she has to struggle between this warmth of family that she's always wanted that she gets here or her duty to kill the prince and it sounds so good again as I've said it's so well loved and I really really want to read this and love this as well very very excited to pick it up and a big thank you again to Doe. Next up I have got three books that Judith was kind enough to send me. This is Nerum's Flyer over on Twitter and she also talks about lesbian books all the time so definitely check her out. But big big thank you in advance Judith for sending me all of these. I'm so grateful. First up is Far From You by Tess Sharp. This one is so well loved by so many different people and I really want to love it and read it too. This is one of Judith's favourites. This follows Sophie whose girlfriend Mina was recently killed and only she knows it was a murder. And so she kind of sets off on the trail of the case to figure out how and who and what happened. And uh, I'm just so excited to read it and get my heart broken. This is another one where lots of my friends have read it and been very very emotional afterwards so I'm excited to see why that is and also hopefully have a wee breakdown too, we'll see. <laughs> Next up we have got Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. This is another book I'm very highly anticipating. This follows a lesbian main character, she's Puerto Rican and through her character we really explore the intersections of being queer and Puerto Rican and also some intersectional feminism as she begins an internship with her favourite feminist author and we really just get this big exploration of her identity and how all these parts of her can intersect and I'm very intrigued to read about this kind of feminism and just a lesbian main character. There's a motorcycling lesbian love interest apparently so like very intrigued there <laughs> and it just sounds very good. I've heard very very good things about it and I want to read it and love it. And finally is Summer of Salt by Katrina Lino. This is another one I'm very highly anticipating. This is like 
it's giving me practical magic vibes in that there's sisterhood, there's witches who live in just a regular town and everyone knows they're a bit weird but they let, it, let them off with it. And so we follow a girl who lives on this very strange island where really just bizarre things happen and she comes from a family of witches and she's eagerly waiting to feel this kind of touch of magic and power that every other woman in her family has but she's not yet felt it and as her 18th birthday draws nearer she gets more and more worried about this. But she also meets a girl and there's some kind of romance there and very just odd things happening and I'm so intrigued. I love this kind of concepts of just a little bit of magic and a little bit of a weird vibe and atmosphere. I love that so I'm very excited to see how it plays out in this book. Finally we have got books that I have received for review or from publishers. So first up big thank you to Team Bookmark for these two After Love and Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating. So first up is Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating. I read and adored this one. There's a vlog up if you want to know more of my thoughts about it but this is just the sweetest rom-com and we follow two girls, Honey and Issue of course, who each end up roped into this fake dating situation with the other and learning a lot about each other and different ways of experiencing the world while also falling in love <laughs> and it is just so gorgeous and sweet and romantic and everything you'd really want from a rom-com and of course because this is Adiba Jagardar and she does this so well there's also this exploration of their culture and these different ways of experiencing being Muslim or being Bengali or being queer and all of this and it is just so gorgeous, so charming. I really, really recommend it. Next up is Afterlove by Tanya Byrne, which I read very recently and adored. This follows a main character called Ash who dies very, very tragically and becomes a reaper in the afterlife, part of this group of fierce girl reapers. However, she cannot forget her girlfriend from before she died and she's just desperate to meet up with her again, no matter what it takes. And this book is pitched as the lesbian love story you've been dying to read which sold me immediately, that's right up my alley, and it is not a lie, it is indeed the lesbian love story I was dying to read, it is so damn good. I just adored it so much, it's so so gorgeous and mm, good feelings. There's not much more I can say, I just I, I loved it, I've got urge if you want more coherent thoughts, but for now I am in love with this. <laughs> Next up I have got Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson, so thank you to Pride Book Tours and Scholastic for sending me this copy. I absolutely adore this one, this is by the same author as You Should See Me in a Crown and it's just as wonderful. This follows two queer black girls who both attend a summer music festival, they're each really struggling from really complicated personal situations and looking for this festival to just kind of give them answers and clarity and just something to help their situation and they both meet each other and they're kind of instantly connected to each other and they begin to team up to complete this quest that the festival has to find golden apples to win a prize and yeah we just follow them through the festival it's so good and fun and it also deals very sensitively with the complicated situations these characters are in Tony is grieving her father who died a few months before and who kind of found his place at this festival so she is hoping to do the same with herself and we also follow Olivia who is dealing with the consequences of intimate photos of her being leaked by an ex-boyfriend and just her need for relationships to feel loved and appreciated and this leading to her kind of contorting herself into people she's not to feel loved and I just I really felt for her and for Tony as well and just everything they're going through it's just so touching but such a good overall very joyful book and I really really enjoyed it and finally we have got The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed so big thank you to Del Rey for sending me this this is a fantasy book that's come out recently that everyone seems to be adoring so I'm very excited it's full of like Hungarian myth and folklore and history and it just sounds very good, it's incredibly Jewish as well. I'm not certain on the plot but I just know that it's like whimsical and dark and woodsy and it sounds very very good and as everyone's been loving it I'm hoping I will too. But yes I have very high hopes for when I'm more in a fantasy mood, hopefully sometime soon. And yeah that has been all the books I've acquired recently. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this, I've definitely enjoyed hauling all of these books but now I have to figure out how to fit them all in my shelves. <laughs>
But yes, as always, I'll have links to all of these books down below as well as my reviews where I have them. And yes, you can check out my social media down there as well. Anything you could ever need is linked down there. And yes, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you with another video soon.